In giant print farms, there are a lot of beds that have to be removed and parts that need to be removed. Um, and it's a lot easier if the people doing that are mechanical. Here are a few print farms that are using robots to remove parts. So number one, the Autobot by Call Me Swall. So this was a project done by a student, Swale Oways. And this is a ROS enabled or robotic mobile platform that has had an individual manipulator put on top of it that this team had created. If you want to, there's a hack a day that this project is supported on if you want to check all of the hardware and design of it. It's actually a very good project. But this robot is able to use QR codes in order to track into position on a machine and then use its manipulator to remove a magnetic build plate and then deliver that build plate to a destination. This is a really great example. It's always fun to see student projects working on this kind of stuff because they have a limitation on them both in budget and in time that requires them to boil an idea down very far to get to the basic essence of it. This is a design that we would almost use in our own Slant 3D print farms. Uh, Swale, if you want to reach out to us, let us know. But this design is just very effective, gets the job done, and could be implemented. Here at Slant 3D, we have our own filament fill. Phil is a small mobile robot that we are engineering in order to deliver filament around the print farm. He moves from destination to destination, and is very often used just for loading up filament onto them and delivering them to different parts in the factory, where it's really hard to have some technician have to go grab rolls of filament for a new production job that's being swapped out, where Phil can basically serve as a very flexible uh, conveyor line. In addition to Phil, we are working on other robots down the line that will actually be removing beds and collecting parts within the farm itself and then delivering them to post-processing. Until then, Phil serves as the mobile base and technicians still deliver and load him up with parts and components to be delivered around the factory. Voodoo Manufacturing. Now, this is kind of a sad project because it doesn't exist anymore, but Voodoo Manufacturing back in 2017 showed off their uh, print farm system where they had a universal robots collaborative robot arm that was programmed to remove parts from individual machines within a node. Uh, eventually they had planned to put this arm on a rail system that would run up and down their entire farm removing parts and pieces, but Voodoo went out of business in 2020 so they weren't able to fully finish that project, but it makes one of the best demos that's online right now. This one is a, basically another student project by Ali Aburaya. This was done at the Technicum Digital Factory. It's basically a teaching lab where students are put to work creating actual real physical solutions to problems. This system is basically a linear motion system with a small actuator on the end. But this is a really cool one because not only does it remove the bed and deliver the parts, but the bed is then very, in a very controlled way, has its parts removed and then delivered into a bin. And that bin can collect parts over time so that you can have large production runs. This is a very clean and well-designed industrial system. It has some scalability issues and some complexity issues because there's a lot of steps along the way, but it's a good way of getting it done. And it actually leads in to the next one. So the Prusa Pro AFS. The print farm system that Prusa is working on debuted back in about 2021. This system is basically a linear Cartesian robot arm that runs up and down a row of printers that are based on the Prusa XL. It removes the magnetic build plate. We do not see how the build plate is flexed or moved in order to remove the parts. It doesn't appear inside of the video, but this is kind of what everybody expects a print farm to sort of operate like. It's a nice controlled tight system where each one of the nodes is a location that the robot arm knows and then it can go over there, pull the part, replace the build plate, and keep on going. So this is a very traditional sort of manufacturing system. Prusa is expected to start shipping the Pro AFS sometime in the near future once they get through their supply chain challenges. The XL just shipped, so it should be coming fairly soon. Lastly, the Form Labs Form Cell. All of the other systems that we've looked at have actually been uh, for FDM systems. And that's the most common because FDM systems are the most automatable because since there's not as much cleanup and washing that has to occur, they're actually very good for very simple sort of automations. But the form cell is a really good example of where it does work out in resin systems. So this was an early kind of research project that Form Labs was working on in order to produce things like their custom Gillette handles. The form cell, again, basically a linear motion system. It's very similar to the Pro AFS, only instead of removing regular print beds, they're removing the build platforms from resin machines, the, the Form Labs resin machines. Those build platforms were then delivered to a destination where they could be washed and then knocked off and returned with fresh beds going into the machines. 
And this is typically how most resin machines do it. Uh, Carbon and even for, uh, Stratasys and 3D Systems have demonstrated these types of systems where you have a row of machines and then you have a robot arm pull them out as well. Uh, they have not been formally deployed. The form cell was a formal product for a period of time, and that's why it makes it onto this list, because it was actually in use for a long period and wasn't solely a demonstrator. So hopefully you enjoyed that little tour of ways that print farms and smaller size machine cells are able to be scaled up into mass production systems. Robotics are absolutely necessary to hit mass production, really large scale mass production. Because with 3D printing, the only real cost inside of the part is the power and the material going into making that part. Any additional cost is from the handling. So anytime you can eliminate humans having to handle the piece between the machine and the box that it ships in, you reduce the cost of the part. So that's why we push really hard on automation. Comment down below if there's other topics that you'd like us to cover and give us a like and subscribe if you like this content that we've been putting out. We publish every Tuesday and Saturday, so we'll see you soon. Have a great day, everybody.